The purpose of this video is to show you how to use the new fast and low editor. We're going to be going through all the steps to get your first map up and running. Uh, check out the video description below to find all the links on where to download these tools. Once you download Unity, the first thing you got to do is create a new project. You then need to find the location of your project and replace all of its contents with the files downloaded from the GitHub repository. When you're done replacing all the files, the Unity editor should look like in the video. First thing you want to do is delete the prototype scene. We won't be using that for this tutorial. After that, you want to double click into a new scene and we can start the process. As you can see in the video, you can use the little scene gizmo at the top right to change your view. And you can also change between perspective and orthographic view so it's easier to place stuff. So unless you want to use the starting default blue and white structure, uh, you want to delete it. Uh, if you go over to this directory here, uh, you should be able to find all the different player structures of varying colors. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be using green. So just grab the object and drag it into your desired location. Alright, the next part we're going to be placing wall pieces. So, wall pieces can be found here in the pre built model structure folder. Simple, you just drag it in. In the top right corner in the inspector, you can rotate it. You can also use the arrows to drag it around. Try to fit it into, uh, fit it closely with the other pieces. Press Ctrl D, you can duplicate, and then you can just drag it around. So uh, now we're just going to use, uh, just going to be building the rest using the same steps. If you run into some unsightly seams in your models, you can always fill the seams with wall trims, which can be found in the Assets Tools for Mods Pre-Built Model Structures Wall Trims folder. Just drag it in and just cover it up. The next thing we're going to figure are the doors that we've added into our level. In each of these structures that we placed, you can actually click on the door prefab and further modify the door properties. So in this case, uh, you can adjust the color of the door frame, the color of the door, how much you want the door to open. And if you need to change the direction the door is facing, you can just rotate the, uh, the prefab itself. When you're done placing your structure pieces and modifying your doors, we can now work on creating a ceiling for your level. So the first thing you do is just right click an empty spot in the hierarchy and select cube. Uh, rename that object to ceiling. Then change the layer to environment as shown in the video. and adjust the scale so that it fully covers your level. We're now going to be looking into adding lighting to our level. If you were to go to the Assets, Tools for Mods, Pre-Built Models, and Lights folder, you'll find a variety of light fixture models. Uh, these models already have colliders and point light components attached to them so you don't have to worry about adding it yourself. To add it to the level, simply choose which model you like and drag it onto the scene. You can also adjust the brightness of the light fixture by expanding the light fixture and choosing point light. You can press Ctrl D while highlighting the light fixture to duplicate it you can place them around your map.
When you are done placing all your light fixtures, go to the lighting tab. The settings should be correct by default, however just double check to make sure that it matches with the video. Hit the generate lighting button at the bottom right corner to start baking. The fast and low editor comes with an assortment of rebuilt furniture for you to use. These can be found in the Assets, Tools for Mods, Pre-built Models, Furniture folder. To add a particular object to your level, just drag the desired object onto your scene and reposition the pieces to your liking. The collider and layers and tags are already added, so you don't need to worry about adding it yourself. We'll now be looking at adding light probes to your level. Light probes make a huge difference in how your players and enemy models look in your level. Here's an example of how an NPC would look without light probes. And here's a picture of how an NPC would look with light probes. To start adding light probes to your level, right click in an empty spot in your hierarchy, select lighting, and choose light probes. Ideally, you want to place the light probes where there are changes in the lighting. So for example, you will want to place a set of light probes directly underneath a light fixture, as that would be the brightest spot in the room. You also want to place a set of light probes close to the edge of the walls, because that would be where there's less lighting. Depending on the number of light fixtures you add to your room, your light probe network could be either really complicated or very simple. If you need a reference on how to add light probes, feel free to take a look at the prototype scene included with the level editor. When you're finished adding all your light probes, go back to the lighting tab and hit the generate lighting button. This will rebake your lighting taking the light probes into account. To make your enemies run for cover, you need to add cover points into your map. You can do this by adding the cover points setup prefab, which is located in the assets, tools for mods, prefabs folder. The prefab itself comes with five cover points. However, there's actually no limit to the number of cover points you want to add to your level. Just duplicate the cover point spheres if you want to add more cover points to your map. If you click on the cover points, if you look on the inspector tab, you'll be able to select what stance you want your NPC to use when they reach the spot. To add waypoints and patrol routes to your level, you need to add the waypoint setup prefab located in the Assets, Tools for Mods, Prefabs folder. Each level can have up to four patrol paths. These paths are created by the children objects in the waypoint setup prefab. By default, each path only has two points. However, you can duplicate these points to extend the pathway and create patrol paths as long as you want. We'll now show you how to add enemies to your custom level. 
Use the preset enemy spawn point template prefab found in the assets tools for mods prefabs folder. Drag the prefab to where you want the enemies to spawn in your level. You can use the inspector to modify the properties of the enemy spawn. Here you can determine the, whether he's a patroller, whether he uses a shotgun, whether he's sitting, and you can choose what race the enemy is. The starting zone structure placed in the beginning of the tutorial actually contains the game manager prefab. This is a component that allows you to add your own custom music and modify the enemy and civilian densities. The level description prefab is used to set up the mission description and snapshot shown in the in-game debriefing screen. This prefab is located in the assets tools for mods prefabs folder. This prefab does not need to be dragged into the scene. It only needs to be modified in the level editor. We're now going to add a navigation map to the level so the AI knows which surfaces are walkable. Click on the navigation tab, select bake, and in the bottom right portion of the bake window, select bake. We'll also be adding an occlusion map to your level so that objects that aren't seen by the camera wouldn't be rendered. The last thing we're going to do is add a floor material to our existing floor. They are located in the Assets, Tools for Mods, Pre-Build Models, Floor Materials folder. First, select the floor game object, which is the quad, and drag the floor material into the material slot. As you can see, the tiles are far too large for this level. However, if you click on the floor material, you can adjust the tiling X and Y values so it fits with your map. When all the steps are completed, it's time to export your mod. You want to make sure that you've deleted the prototype scene, or else it might cause conflicts when you build your mod. Uh, when you're ready, click on the tools, go to Mod Tool, and hit Export Mod. To test your level, drag your exported mod folder into your Fast and Low Mods directory. After that, it should show up in your in-game custom level screen. That's the end of this tutorial. Check out the video description below to find links on where to download the editor and where to find the wiki page for additional information. Thank you!